uh, let's start the short summary of billion law 27th edition and starting with the chapter one that is metabolic response to injury the most important concepts of this chapter is to understand what is homeostasis means uh, in normal injury if there is no intervention body will uh, compensate for any injury and try to restore it to the normal level but in the current day and age with aggressive resuscitation and hospital measures the old definition hemostasis of a closed group does not stand so the important concept is the surgery and other steps may help the patient to come back to a situation after which the hemostasis can occur and then the person can return to the original state in this Mm, we see that the nature of response is we read only there is the SIRS but also there is CARS that is compensatory anti-inflammatory response syndrome first the inflammatory mediators lead to the SIRS and then it evolves from a pro-inflammatory pro state driven primarily by the innate immune system like macrophages, neutrophils, and radical cells into compensatory anti-inflammatory response syndrome characterized by suppress immunity and diminish resistance to infection now there are various mediators of the metabolic response to injury and the important one is pro-inflammatory cytokines which are mainly interleukin 1 tnf interleukin 6 and 8 uh, which act uh, on the hypothalamus cause pyrexia and others uh, act on the skeletal muscles to induce proteolysis to you uh, produce the adequate amount of proteins in order for the recovery to supply to the mm, tissues then next important is this table we see that the stress leads to activation of the spinal cord and pituitary response leading to secretion of ACTH and then cortisol and then there is release of adrenaline and then there is release of glucagon from the pancreas and then the different mediators so these all will help to increase the lipolysis increase the protein catabolism and then increase hepatic gluconeogenesis the peripheral sensitivity of insulin will decrease so insulin resistance will occur and there will be pyrexia and increase hepatic acid phase reactant synthesis now within hours of the upregulation there is also anti-inflammatory response like intergenous cytokine antagonists like interleukin 1 receptor antagonist and tnf soluble receptors and further adaptive changes include development of tl per 2 type of counter inflammatory response that is regulated by interleukin 4 5 9 and 13 and transforming growth factor beta so if these continue on it will lead to cars and immunosuppression so there will be chance of nosocomial infection also they release uh, various local mediators which are useful to regulate the uptake of neutrophils so that the clearance of different products can occur properly so SIRS is initially driven by pro-inflammatory cytokines and followed by the antagonist so SRS includes first pro-inflammatory and then anti-inflammatory response so metabolic response to surgery is the ebb and flow model so in this first there is the shock stage and the secondly there is catabolism stage shock stage is characterized by decreased basal metabolic rate reduced cardiac output hypothermia and lactic acidosis while the in the flow phase there is the tissue edema increased bmr increased cardiac output raised body temperature leukocytosis increased oxygen consumption and increased gluconeogenesis so the um, amniosis are derived from peripheral tissue and transport to the wound site or liver so that the protein degradation occurs through the UB within proteasome degradation pathway and liver also has negative acute phase reactance which is mainly albumin rather than decrease in synthesis of albumin it is due to the uh, transuration of albumin through the transcapillary route so there are two type of acute phase reactions positive and negative and the 
regarding change is bound information we see that one gram of nitrogen is contained in 6.25 gram of protein and 36 gram of weight weight tissue so one gram nitrogen in urine means 36 gram of tissue is lost so we must avoid the following factors that uh, compounds the responsibility so we must avoid a hypothermia we must avoid aggressive fluid supplementation volume loss tissue edema starvation sires infection immobility etc there is new concept that if we have minimal excess technique and if we have blocked the painful stimuli and minimal starvation and early mobilization we can have better response to surgery thank you